have a couple of quick announcements I would like to share with you. The first one being that if you have children, grandchildren, you still have time to enroll them in our dynamic, wonderful Christian Education School, the Zion Temple Christian Academy for this school year, 2019 to 2020. Please feel free to call the Academy office at 861-5551. Also, in terms of education, registration is now open for our 44th year of classes for the Zion Temple First Pentecostal for our Bible Institute, which starts October the 15th. It's every Tuesday night, and we just have a sampling of maybe some of the classes, Christian education, new training for service, understanding people, Old Testament survey, perspective for Christian education, and also the revelation of Jesus Christ. So come and learn of Jesus and our wonderful dynamic Christian and uh, Bible Institute. And also, if you're listening to this, this is Sunday, September the 22nd, and you'll still have time to come out and worship with the men's. This is the men's day weekend. So we will have uh, the service on Sunday morning at the regular time. Our speaker will be our Suffolk and Bishop Charles L. Smith. And then we will have an afternoon topic at five o'clock. So come out and worship with the men in service as they serve and lift up the Lord in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And at this time, it gives me, of course, a great pleasure to introduce our very own Suffolk and Bishop Charles L. Smith, hear he him as he brings us the words of life. Amen. Amen. That's a good song. That's a good song. Can I stop a minute? <laughs> I could have a little praise service off, off of that song. Because when I think of the goodness of Jesus, I don't have to tell my story and I don't have to tell my testimony, but when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he has done for me, my soul, my soul, my soul cries out, hallelujah. Just being able to get up in the morning Clothed in your right mind Activity of the limb Nobody had to dress me today I dressed myself Nobody had to give me a shower I took my own shower Drove my own car Opened the door for myself. Carried my own bags over to the church. Somebody else got them when I got close to the building, but I was able to carry two bags. Y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. Woo, hallelujah. Ah, uh, so know. You know, don't you, mother? Hallelujah. When you get old, things start to change for you. When you're young, you do what you want to do, and you don't ask for nobody to help you. But when you're old, time you need some assistance. Amen. That's not the message for today. Thanks for letting me have my own private praise party. I'm glad you came to my party today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. The Lord has taught me to preach the word. That's enough. You done had enough worship. It's time to preach the word. Amen. Let's turn in the word of the Lord to the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 13 through 16. Book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 13 through 16. Let us stand in reverence to the word of the Lord. And thank God for being so good. 
unto his people. When you're ready, say amen. amen. Let us read. Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost his savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under the foot of men. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Father God, I bow before you and thank you for that song, hallelujah. And I thank you for the opportunity to preach and teach your word. What a great privilege to stand behind a sacred desk and declare the whole counsel of God. I pray that you remember those who hearts are bowed in sorrow and have had death recently in their families. I pray that you will send comfort to them, even though the grieving period may still be going on. You're still able to comfort them and to help them. I pray that you remember those who are out of the ark of safety today that came to the church. I pray that they will be touched by the word of God. And I pray that healing virtue will go out for those that are sick and afflicted, where they will come in afflicted but leave healed, hallelujah. I pray that you remember those that are in the hospital and those that are confined to their homes, and especially the elderly saints who cannot get to the house of God many times. I thank you for the ones that made it today, but there are many who want to come to God's house, but physically are not able to do so. I pray, Lord God, that you will bless the words of your servant today, and whether they are many or few, that you will bless them today and let them be powerful and let them be effective in making a change in men and women's lives. These favors and these blessings we ask in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Our thought today is found in verse... 13 and A, and in, in verse 14 and A, which says, Ye are the salt of the earth, and ye are the light of the world. Our subject today is the positive influence of salt and light. The positive influence of salt and light. These scriptures that we read today are parables. Parables are earthly stories that have a heavenly meaning or a natural story that has a spiritual meaning. These parables are part of the laws that will govern the character of those who belong to God's spiritual kingdom. Amen. The members of this kingdom must have special qualities within them. Hallelujah. They cannot be run-of-the-mill people. They cannot be people that 
have no purpose, people that have no influence, people that are not able to affect other people, but the members of the kingdom, of the spiritual kingdom of Jesus Christ, will have to be influential people. Hallelujah. Maybe I should say that again. Every child of God has to influence somebody in a positive way. Amen. And we may not know how to approach them. We may not know how to get the words together to influence them, but influence is not directly attached to the right words and the right way. Hallelujah. But influence is just being in their presence. Hallelujah. It's not a Bible class, not a great sermon, it is not a dissertation, but when a child of God walks in the room, the light should come on. It can be a bar, it can be a party, it can be some place where wickedness and evil is going on. It can be a place where they're selling drugs. But when the saints walk in, Someone ain't supposed to be there. But you might go to somebody's house and think you're going for a visit and you can smell pot when you come in the door. Yum, yum. I got to bring it home. Hallelujah. Cigarette smoke and drinking and alcohol might meet you at one of your family members house and you thought you went there just to have a visit but they having a party but a child of God that is salt and a child of God that is light has to have a positive influence on the party Now, I, I'm coming back to what I want to say, but listen to me. I've had people smoking, and I came in their midst, and they would put it out. You mean I paid $12 for a pack of cigarettes, and I'm going to put it out? Hallelujah. I've had people say, excuse me, Reverend, hallelujah, just a moment, there's a couple of things I got to do. I got to put my stuff away before you come in. Because you're the man of God. Hallelujah. I'm just going to make this one little illustration and I'm going. I got some more stuff to get. Hallelujah. But if I walk in on somebody that's doing something wrong and they don't pay no attention to me, I either got to walk out or, hallelujah, not go back there anymore. Because when a child of God walks in the room, salt walks in the room. When a child of God walks in the place, light comes in the place. Maybe there was darkness there, but now there's light. Maybe there was a whole bunch of stuff going on, but there should be the fear of God and the reverence for this person who is living holy. When they come in the room. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are like salt and we are like light. The saints must be the salt of the earth and express through their lives good, godly character and holiness 
in order to influence sinners, sinners, and cause them to change their lives and be saved. Hallelujah. If you can walk into a bunch of sinners and they don't feel uncomfortable, something ain't working right. They can just keep on doing what they're doing like you ain't even there. Uh, something ain't working right. But wherever we go, there should be a positive influence on the atmosphere when we walk in. Hallelujah. Because we are so. And because we are light. The saints must be the light of the world so that radiance, the radiance of God's glory comes from our lives. Hallelujah. When we walk into a dark place, the light that is in us shines in that place and it makes a difference about what's going on there because light and darkness cannot occupy the same place at the same time. When the light comes on, the darkness has to flee. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God's glory, hallelujah, should be in us. When we walk in darkness and influence others, not only to see the light, but to come out of darkness into his marvelous light. Hallelujah. Are we influencing those? that are around us? Do they know that we are saved? Don't be scared. That's not a trap. <laughs> But people, my family members, should know I'm saved. The, hallelujah. The post office should know I'm saved. The doctor's office should know I'm saved. When I go to the bank, they should know I'm saved. My neighbors should know I'm saved. Not because I know 12 scriptures that I can give them about salvation, but they should be able to testify to others there's something different about those people. I don't know what it is, but there's something different. I don't know what I feel, but there's something different. I don't know what I really see, but there's something different about them. Hallelujah. And I'll tell you why I'm saying this. The word uh, positive means uh, with intent or something immediately identifiable hallelujah influence means the power or capacity of causing an effect indirectly or through tangible ways hallelujah power is the force or energy used to do the work. Hallelujah. Now, I already preached this. I'm going to say it one more time, and I'm going to move on. It's not how many words you use. Well, I'm from Zion Temple First Pentecostal Church at 3771 Reading Road, zip code 45229. 
We have services daily at our church. We have, amen, Sunday school. We have morning worship. We have evening worship. We have Bible study. Hallelujah. And I really would like for you to come sometime. Hallelujah. But what about, what about just walking in a room where evil is, where the devil's having his good pleasure, and letting them feel the essence, who shut up, the glory and the power that is emanating from you without you saying a word. Ain't that powerful? There has to be a power or a cause that can bring an effect that is either indirectly or intangible in the way that is carried out. Hallelujah. In the Bible, we were writing about the men, Paul and Silas, when they came to Thessalonica today. And if you already read the bulletin, you know what I'm going to say. But their thing they said about them these that have turned the world upside down have come hither also. And I wrote in there, and it was kind of comical, my little humor, how could two human beings turn a whole world upside down with the power of God? The gospel that they preach the life that they live, the miracles that they perform were not done just by Paul and Silas, but they were done by the power of God that was in Paul and Silas. Hallelujah. What they were talking about there is the Roman Empire had six million slaves. And Somebody say, yes, sir. I know I'm doing history lessons now. But there are movements, even in this day and time, that are saying that we can't handle the violence problem in Cincinnati. The opioid crisis is too great for us, and we cannot handle that. But what about a gospel of Jesus Christ that can handle all of that and even more. Oh, hallelujah. How did Paul and Silas turn the world upside down? They preached the gospel of Jesus Christ that you can be a new creature in Christ. All things can pass away and all things can become new. You can have power with God Almighty. Woo. You don't have to waste your life on drugs. You don't have to keep killing people in order to satisfy your anger. You don't have to do all this other stuff just because you feel you're big and bad enough to do it. Hallelujah. You need Jesus. You need Jesus. Hallelujah. I ain't going to stay very long here, but Paul and Silas did not try to go to the Roman government and pass a law to banish slavery. Read the book of Philemon and you'll see what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. They saved the slave masters and taught them how to be good and kind people. 
They saved the slaves that were working for them and taught them how not to rebel against their masters, but do everything. Hallelujah. Whether it's in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord. When they saved the slave masters and saved the slaves, they made them brothers in the Lord. Which automatically banished the cruelty that was being poured out in slavery. How am I going to beat my brother with a whip? How am I going to punish him and kick him and threaten him and even hang him if he won't not, ooh, do what I tell him to do? The love of God that is in Christ Jesus constrains me. Even though I am his master, I have another master that is over me. Even though he is my slave, he's more than a slave. He's my brother. He's my brother. He's my brother. Brotherhood. Mm. Brotherhood is greater than slavery. Hallelujah. Back to Philemon. I can't leave that, I guess, for a moment. Paul said, I know that Onesimus did you wrong. Ooh, shut up. I love this. I'm not trying to take up for him, but when he came to Rome, I preached to him the gospel of Christ and he got saved. I'm not sending you back the same man that left you. I'm sending you back a baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the Holy Ghost, child of God. Not trying to cover up his wrongdoing, but I told him he got to come back to you and make it right. He's got to make right what he did wrong. But if he owes you anything, I'll pay it. Oh, God. If he did you any wrong, charge it to my account. Because he's more than a slave. You could kill him for what he did, but you don't lay your hand on him because he's saved now. He got a new heart. He has a new mind. He has a new spirit. He has a new way of doing things. He'll be subject to you. I taught him he's got to go back and make restitution and he has to be subject to you. But if he owes you anything, just send me the bill because he is not just a slave, but he is more than a slave. He's your brother. Hallelujah. 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 The world's got a lot of problems, even while I'm preaching, that they're trying to solve. But the biggest problem is sin. If we could solve the sin problem, which Jesus has already did that, he's waiting on us to accept it, but uh, if we could change the sin problem in their lives, we could have some beautiful people who could become salt in the earth and light in the world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Salt and light are different in some qualities. Salt is used for seasoning food. Its influence over food is tremendous. <laughs> I've had people taste food and it was salty enough, but they say, y'all ain't got no salt in here. Honey. But what about your blood pressure? I, I believe the Lord will heal me if I eat, eat these ribs and his pork chop. I believe. Hallelujah. Don't tempt God. <laughs> but salt is wonderful. When you put salt on something, it just changes everything about that meal, right? How many have ever ate a meal with no salt? Uh, all right. Put your hand down. How many have ate a meal that had plenty of salt on it? Hallelujah. I think we got about the same number on both of them. I didn't see nobody's hand going back here. Hallelujah. But salt brings flavor to the food that you put it on. But if that salt loses its saltiness, if it no longer has the power to change the flavor of the food, it is cast out. Hallelujah. And men walk on it. It is put on the roads to keep the dust down. And I even find a scripture in the book of Luke, Luke 14 uh, and 34 and 35 said that it is neither good for the land nor yet for the downhill. But men cast it out, he that hath ears to hear, let him hear. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I want to make a difference. I don't want people to walk on me. That must be Elder Smith down there. Hallelujah. With no elevation and no influence, and everybody I meet, they take me casually. He don't mean nothing. He preaches good, but he don't live good. He tells everybody else what to do, but I checked him out, and he's not doing what he said he'd do for me to do. How can I believe somebody who is on the same level that I'm on? How can I lift somebody if I'm down there with them? I must be on a candlestick. I must keep my saltiness. Because if I let that go, whoo, hallelujah. I'm on my way to destruction. Light is used to show people their way who are walking in the darkness. A true saint will also influence somebody else to change their sinful lives and to come out of darkness into the light by living a holy and righteous life before them. I'm almost done. But every one of you, even including myself, that proclaims that we know God and proclaim that we have the right salvation and claim that 
We have the power to live holy. Make sure that you live holy because every sinner, members of your own family, friends and neighbors are checking us out to see if what I say matches with what I do. Hallelujah. When we do not live the life that we sing about and talk about and testify about, there is a conflict of interest. And they say, how can they tell me how to live for God and they don't live for God? So that ain't fair. Yes, it is. Because we are the light. We're the light that is shining in darkness. We're the ones that's showing them the way. We already know the way. We're the ones that are trying to convince them, if you want to go to heaven, if you want to be with Jesus, you've got to change your life. If you want to live a holy, righteous life, you must be baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the Holy Ghost. That's the hard part. Because in the 21st century, there is a lot of conflict between what people say and what they actually do. Hallelujah. Our light should be put on a candlestick. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. In my neighborhood, let it shine. Always on my job, let it shine. In my own home, let it shine, let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine everywhere I go. Let it shine. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Maybe somebody is walking in darkness and needs a light. Maybe somebody needs a positive influence from the soul and the light and I can help them to guide them in the right direction. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I didn't expect a lot of shouting on this. <laughs> but I'm going to tell it anyway. The character of the members of the Lord's kingdom cannot be hid. Someone is going to see you and examine your life. So I don't want nobody eyeballing me. Well, they eyeball you all the time anyway. When you come in the room, and it's not because you're of a particular color, but it's because you're a child of God. Don't try to hide the fact <laughs> that I'm saying. Don't try to hide your light of holiness and righteousness within you. Don't be ashamed of the Lord. There are people that are around you that need to know about Jesus. Hallelujah. And need to be saved. Last but not least. In Matthew 5, 5 and 16. He said let your light. So shine. Before men. That they may see 
your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Hallelujah. Let them see light, the positive influence of light in your life. We must recognize that our life has either a positive or negative effect upon people. So if they're going to look at you, let them see us living responsibly and let them see us glorifying God. Lord, I'm not trying to sell myself and I'm not trying to sell my person. I'm not trying to sell me to the public, but let the glory of the Lord be seen in me and on me and around me. Hallelujah. Let your glory be upon me so strongly that it will influence somebody to ask the question, what church do you go to? Hallelujah. There is something about you that's different from other people. I know I, I, know I don't want to say you look peculiar, you look a certain kind of way, but just your character and your demeanor and the way you talk and the way you act and the glory, the Shekinah glory, the essence of his glory that is upon your life makes me believe that you are who you say you are and that God is in you and that God is working with you and in you to make a difference in someone else's life. Hallelujah. I'm done. But I really believe this with all my heart. And this is not 20 minutes more. I just want to say one more thing. No, I'm done. But I believe everybody that's listening to me and those that are listening on the broadcast, we need to hold out the light. Hallelujah. Darkness is everywhere. Evil is everywhere. I don't know whether you felt it or not, but this feels like evil keeps closing in more and more. Don't it? Don't it, church? I ain't never had people blow on me so much because I don't move out from the red light. And they're driving so fast in a 25 and 35 mile in our zone, it takes you a, a more, more room to get out from your driveway. Y'all ain't been blowed on yet, I guess. <laughs> I went to West Rome with those people and I... I they go right by you and go about 15 feet and pull in at a store or shopping mall. Where was they going? The human family is so wound up now that they are, they are on a high. They don't have to have opioids. They don't have to have drugs. But they're on a high. I got to get from point A to point B at 60 miles an hour in a 35 mile an hour zone. Wouldn't it be nice? Wouldn't it be wonderful? Instead of getting mad at them and saying, if they come back here, I'm going to tell them what happened 
if we could say, Lord, help them to see the light. Lord, let me be the salt of the earth. Lord, let me be the light of the world. So the normal reaction that should come does not come. The way of handling this situation does not even enter into my mind with arguments and fussing and violence. I just say, God, you help them because they don't know what they're doing. They're under another influence that is not godly. Hallelujah. Be a positive influence of song and of light. Amen. God bless you. Have a smile upon you as I pray. Thank you. Thank you very much. You are so kind. <laughs> Amen. We're going to extend the altar call at this time. Amen. And if there's someone here who is not a member of the spiritual kingdom of Jesus Christ, which is the church, hallelujah, you can become a member today. Someone asked me one time, how do I become a member of your church? Well, you have to be born into this church. You have to come in through baptism by one spirit. Are we all baptized into one body? You have to be baptized in water in Jesus' name and filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. And when you get those two things done, you got one more and live a holy consecrated life to God. Hallelujah. Those are the requirements. Those are what you need to do. If you're here today, we're making the altar call for you. The day that you hear his voice, pardon not your heart. a couple of quick announcements I would like to share with you. The first one being that if you have children, grandchildren, you still have time to enroll them in our dynamic, wonderful Christian education school, the Zion Temple Christian Academy for this school year, 2019 to 2020. Please feel free to call the Academy office at 861-5551. Also, in terms of education, registration is now open for our 44th year of classes for the Zion Temple First Pentecostal for our Bible Institute, which starts October the 15th. It's every Tuesday night, and we just have a sampling of maybe some of the classes, Christian education, new training for service, understanding people, Old Testament survey, perspective for Christian education, and also the revelation of Jesus Christ. So come and learn of Jesus and our wonderful dynamic Christian and our Bible Institute. And also, if you're listening to this, this is Sunday, September the 22nd, and you'll still have time to come out and worship with the men's. This is the men's day weekend. So we will have uh, the service on Sunday morning at the regular time. Our speaker will be our servant and bishop, Charles L. Smith. And then we will have an afternoon topic at 5 o'clock. So come out and worship with the men in service as they serve and lift up the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. We hope that you and your family enjoyed our broadcast today. I want to give you a personal invitation to come and to worship here in Zion Temple First Pentecostal Church. If you need transportation, you can call 513-861-2812. If you need prayer, you can call 513-559-9442. We hope and pray that you will come and be with us in our service. You and your family are welcome to come and worship with us here in Zion Temple. May God bless you. May he strengthen you is our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen.